In this video, we're going to take a look at a toolpath that is called fluting. Now, in the previous video, we discussed something called ramping. Now, fluting is pretty much the same as ramping, but fluting allows you to control the ramp in order to create an effect when machining. So here you can see in the center of my screen, I've got a line. And you can see the green point and the red point. So the start point and the end point. So it's going from left to right. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is zoom in on this and rotate it around. So it's at an isometric view so you can see this. Okay. So with that selected to use the fluting toolpath. Now the fluting toolpath works with 2D shapes. So vectors. So if I select toolpaths and then under 2D toolpaths, create fluting toolpath. So if I click on that, it opens up the fluting toolpath for me. So I've got selected vectors and below that, I've got something called reverse selected vectors. So if I wanted to, I could click that and it would go in the opposite direction. Okay, so it saves me having to right click on that and then reverse the vectors, okay? You have a final pass thickness, which is much like the profile, so it will leave something on the bottom of this. You have a start depth and a finish depth. I'll come back to that in a moment because I'm going to choose the tool that I want first. So under fluting tool, select a tool. Now, this has to be something with a form on there. So either, let's say, a ball nose or a V bit, for instance. If you were to do this with an end mill, it wouldn't really give you a nice finish. It would come down at the angle, but it probably wouldn't give you the desired effect. So what I'm going to do for this is use a ball nose. Let's just use the largest one that I have, a half an inch, just so you can see this. So if I click on that, it's half an inch diameter. So I'm going to come down, let's say the radius of that. So let's go a quarter of an inch. And let's come down here. Now I'll explain what all of these do in a moment. What I'm going to do for the time being is turn off the end flute. And I've got a linear start flute and the length of that is 100%. Let's set up my material. So let's say that this material is half an inch thick. Select OK. Just rotate that around and zoom in. And then I'm just going to calculate this so you can see what happens. So because I've done the start flute at 100%, basically what it means is that it will start off at zero here in Z and then slowly come down to my finished depth, which is a quarter of an inch over the 100%, so over the whole of this line. So if I calculate it, you can see what's happened is it's starting there, completely ignore the blue. The blue is just a plunge and a rapid, okay? What we're interested in is this red line. So it starts off there and it comes down at an angle until it gets to the full depth at the end of that line, okay? So this is how people who are doing, let's say, drainage boards or drainage channels, let's say, on uh, kitchen worktops going into the sink, this is how they would do that. So if I right-click on toolpaths and just go to right-click, simulation control bar, and just play that. Okay, so what you can see is that it's starting off at zero here and then it's slowly coming down to the depth there. Okay, maybe if I change the tool, you might see it a little bit better. So let's go a quarter of an inch and I'll just go an eighth of an inch. So just go the radius. Okay, let's delete that simulation and re simulate that. Okay, so you can see that it's coming down to the full depth there and it's just slowly entering the material here. 
Okay, so let's delete that. Double click on fluting, turn my vectors back on. Let's turn the toolpath back on so you can see that. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So the length is 100%. If I'd done that at 50%, it would get down to the finished depth at 50%, which is around about here. Okay, so you can see it's coming down, gets to the finished depth halfway along the line, and then for the rest of the line, it does the full depth. So if I simulate that, you can see that it looks a little bit different. Okay, so this is how you can control the fluting. Okay, so let's say if I change that to 10%, you can see it gets to the full depth at 10% of the line. Now you can also change this to be in inches. So let's say if I wanted this a half an inch, so at a half an inch along that line, it gets to the full depth. Okay, so you can specify an actual size for this if you want to. And you can also change it to be a curve or a custom curve. So if you actually wanted to create a curve, you could create your own and just select it. I'll just select curve and calculate. And you can see that this curves into it rather than coming down at a steep angle. So if I simulate that now, you can see it goes in quite nicely. Okay, and rather than leaving a line down on the bottom there. Okay, so let's delete that. Turn on the vectors. Okay, let's take a look at the end flute. So the end flute, let's do a linear and let's do 10%. Okay, and calculate. So what's happening here, it's still using the curve at the start to go half an inch and it's coming down. When it gets to half an inch, it will be the full depth. And then when it gets to 90% of that line, so there's 10% left, which I've specified here, it comes straight back up. Okay. So if I simulate that, you can see it's going in and then coming back up. Now you can see that it's got a little bit of a mark here. That's because I'm using the linear rather than the curve. So if I were to use curve and then delete that and re-simulate it, you can see it gives me a nice exit. Okay. So let's delete that. Turn those back on. Let's say I wanted this to be 90. So what's happening is this will come down until it gets to half an inch, be the full depth. And then when it gets to 10%, so there's 90% left, it will then start exiting. Okay, so if I simulate that, you can see it gives me this sort of effect. Okay, so that's basically how fluting works. Now you also have the step down strategy so you've got scale so it will just keep on scaling down you've also got translate now to be completely honest with you these two strategies are not really that much different so it's entirely up to you if you want to use them basically what this does it has a step over so the translate you can see it's got a step over between each step down the scale hasn't it's got the step down on the bottom okay now you can also extend above the start depth now the reason for doing that is let's say that you have something that's not flat and you want to come out of the job and you want to make sure that the whole thing actually cuts so you can have it to the tool to actually come right out of the job so you would just extend that there okay now you also have Z control vector. So if I select that, what I'm going to do is draw a line. Now I'll show you what not to do first of all. Okay, so there I've drawn this curvy line. Now if I click select, it will select it, but then if I try to calculate it, it gives me this error. 
So it's saying that the start or end point must be at the top of the bounding box. So I need to basically flip this around so this is at the top. So what I'm going to do is just do this quickly by mirroring. And I'm going to not copy the original. And I'm going to do that about the center, just so it flips it around. So let's select that again and select my original line. And you can see that it does it now. So it's important the way that you draw that. So you have to have the start at the very top rather than down at the bottom, otherwise it won't work properly. Okay, so if I simulate that, you can see what's happening is it's dipping in and out of the material. So you can do some quite funky effects with this if you do this over quite a large sheet and you have the right tooling for it. So this is how you use the fluting toolpath.